The U.S. top military brass is meeting next month to discuss the mounting threat of cyber attack, particularly from hackers linked to Iran. Now, there's mounting concern on both sides of the Atlantic. This after a number of U.S. banks were attacked. Iranian-backed hackers have also been linked to cyber attacks on Saudi and Qatari oil and gas companies using a virus known as Shamoon. Well, the U.S. Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, this week issued a stark warning about the cyber threat. He said that the Pentagon is prepared to take action if America comes under a computer-based attack. These attacks mark a significant escalation of the cyber threat. And they have renewed concerns about still more destructive scenarios that could unfold. The collective result of these kinds of attacks could be a cyber Pearl Harbor, an attack that would cause physical destruction and the loss of life. Well, here, British intelligence services are launching a new apprentice scheme to recruit more tech-savvy youngsters to deal with cybercrime and cyberterrorism. Well, joining me to discuss the threat of this, the scale of this threat, is Dr. Thomas Ridd, security expert at King's College London. Hello, good to Hi. have you with me. Um, are you surprised at how vehemently um, Leon Panetta has responded to this? In some ways, I am surprised that he used this expression, cyber Pearl Harbor, yet again. It's been around for a while. And it certainly overstates the threat in a significant way. Overstates? Overstates. Indeed. So when we hear of the US government or the UK government military or um, their systems being attacked, why would that be overstating it? So for um, one simple fact, we've never seen a cyber attack that killed a single human being. We've never seen a cyber attack that destroyed you know, something really significant, a building, for instance. So right now we're using this war metaphor or cyber Pearl Harbor in a metaphorical way. We compare something, things that are actually quite different. Who's doing this? So it's important uh, to see that senior politicians are doing this, and they're doing it for a reason, to, to put pressure on people in the US Congress, on parliaments, on governments, to, 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 to start doing something about the problem, because there is a real problem. And where's that problem coming from? Because Iran has been cited as, as one of the so-called perpetrators. Indeed, but I think it is quite important if we ask who did it to first distinguish between different attacks. Let's make the distinction between three attacks. First is denial of service attacks. It's basically like blocking the entrance to a building. Okay. What happened to HSBC yesterday. Second is breaking into a building and smashing all the computers, which is what happened with the golf company uh, Shamoon attack that you, that you mentioned earlier. The third kind of attack is the most complicated one. It's like entering a, entering a building, finding the secret machine that controls the oil production, and then not just breaking that machine, but changing what it actually does in a, in a, in a, in a subtle and destructive way. And how often do we see attacks like that? The third kind of attack? The third kind, the most, the most yeah. threatening kind. I extremely difficult, extremely rare, because it is actually relatively difficult to, to do. Not because of those systems that control the, the, the oil production of Saudi Aramco, for instance, which was not affected by this attack. Those systems are badly secured, but they are unique in many ways. So you can't just develop one cyber weapon and fire it against all those machines. You have to know the machine in order to attack it. Why should our viewers care about these things that seem to be happening in areas that don't seem to affect our everyday life? So there are areas of cyber security that affect your everyday life, of course. If you do online banking, you could be uh, affected. But really, we don't know whether a cyber attack in the future could take down the, say, the UK electricity grid. In order to do that, we need to do something now to avoid, to avoid this rather unlikely but possible So scenario. bringing in the young people to do this, as, as has been said, is that that's the right route, in your opinion? Um, it's, certainly some, it's certainly a, a route that could be productive. We don't know yet. It, 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 we only will be able to see how those young people are doing once, we, you know, once they de deliver some results. But it's certainly a, a, right, uh, a right, right decision to, to take. OK. Thomas Ridd, Dr Thomas Ridd, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Well, there.